Thanks for Skyloom for sponsoring this video. If you want to try out their Luminar Neo photo editing software, use the link in the description and get 10% off your purchase. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Miro and today I have a task of capturing a bee floating above the flower. It's gonna be difficult. Let's go. Okay, as always, I will be using my Sigma 105mm f2.8 macro art series lens for the Sony camera. Good lens. I will also be using my Speedlight, the Strobo 60S. S stands for Sony, of course. Again, a wonderful flash. It's kind of a mid-range flash and I would prefer it to fire a little bit more often, to be perfectly honest. But the settings on this are going to be around 1 16th of power, which means that I will be getting you know, enough bursts when I'll be burst shooting. And as for the diffuser, I have this guy from JJC. You attach this onto your speed light and it basically you know, spreads the light evenly in front of the camera. You can also use it for portraits. I use it for macro. So this will be my gear and well, a bunch of nerve wrecking nervy moments with the bees. So here I found a nice spot at the Arboretum where I have a bunch of flowers and a bunch of worker bees. Now I know that each bee visits a flower only one time, at least that's what I read. So technically I'm gonna have to be lucky to capture a bee on a specific flower. So the way I will approach this is, well I'm going to find a composition first. So a flower with a nice background and then just wait for the bee to come onto the flower and hopefully by you know, spraying and praying, by burst shooting, I will get one photograph at least where the bee is going to be just above the flower. Now technically that's very easy, but practically it's really hard. Now the biggest challenge is actually me waiting for the bee to come because you have all of these bees flying around you and you're always looking where you can you know take the shot and then you move away from that one composition that you've set up and well at the moment you do this a bee flies onto that flower and i mean it's like a it's like murphy's law and it happens so many times so being patient and waiting for the bee to actually come you don't have that much opportunities but you will have a much nicer composition now as for the settings i will be shooting with a speed light which means that the max shutter speed is 1 250th of a second and that's where I will keep it because bees are really fast creatures or bugs. They move really fast and I want to freeze them in action. I could go with the high speed sync, you know, get the shutter speed faster, but then I only have one shot. I cannot do burst photography because the speed light just fires once and it doesn't repeat the flashy process. That's a problem I think with this speed light. So therefore I will be using like normal flash manual settings and I think I'm going to go with 1 16th of power. Now this really depends on how much you want that artificial light to illuminate the subject and how much you want the natural light to illuminate. Now luckily I have this diffuser which makes the artificial light softer. It's not as soft as you know, like natural light here in the shade but it's it's softer than if I was to just use this and if I was just to use this the light would pretty much go above the subject so I need to kind of project it down in front of the subject so this is where this comes in handy. Now as for the aperture I'm going to go between f11 and f16. I know that's quite closed down but with macro photography you need to have that aperture closed down in order to get most of the subject in focus. I'm also not going to be shooting at one-to-one -one magnification because in that case I'm only going to capture the bee as it's right above the flower and I want to have some separation between the actual flower bun and the bee so therefore I'll have to be a little bit further away and focus a little bit further away as well giving me a little bit deeper depth of field. Now if I say a little bit one more time it's going to be one more time too many. A little bit. Now in order to compensate for the lack of natural light I'm just going to raise my ISO. So I'm not going to shoot with ISO 100. I think I'm gonna go with 400 maybe even 800 because as I said my shutter speed needs to be fast enough to freeze the motion and I don't want to put too much power into the speed light making everything look too artificially. So I want to have some sort of natural ambient light and well one way to do it is to raise the ISO. The other one would be to open up the aperture but that again you know I need that closed down in order to get the most of the subject in focus. So I'm going to have to sacrifice a little bit of digital noise which I can clean up later in Lightroom in post-production. Anyway, 
Anyway, that's it for me guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and leave a comment down below if you have any comments or questions. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.